The question is that the address be agreed to, and I call the honourable member for Fairfax. Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy Speaker. In my maiden speech in this parliament, I stated clearly that I did not believe, and our party did not support, the development of professional politicians. I believe the parliament should be a forum where citizens may serve and bring the benefit of their life's experiences, whatever they are, to the important issues of the day for the benefit of the nation. Now, at the end of the 44th Parliament, it's time to reflect on what our party has contributed to the national debate and what our achievements are. Unfortunately, politics relies on attacks on individuals and not on sound policy discussion. Rather than endlessly attack individuals in Parliament, debate in this chamber should focus on the agenda for the nation. Personal integrity is an important quality that needs to be at the very heart of public service. Any person seeking public office must realise it's not for him or it's about, but it's about service for the greater good. In this place, all members must re repress their own personal interests for the benefit of the nation, the citizens of Australia who elect them, to put Australia's interests before our own. True to my maiden speech, having concluded my service in the 44th Parliament of this House of Representatives, I will not seek further election to this House at the next election. I will use this opportunity to address a number of important issues and set out our party achievements in the 44th Parliament. Palm United will contest Senate elections in every Australian state, and Palm United's voting record has been clear in the 44th Parliament, and it's why the electorate needs to judge at the, uh, at the coming election. I have been continually personally attacked over the last three years by a centrally controlled media, which is, by its very support for the two-party system, a danger for democracy in this country. All of the so-called scandals and media questions have amounted in hindsight to nothing, and the same is true about the current lies and criticisms which I will deal with later in this speech. The status quo of this country is threatened by any third-party political force in politics and will mobilise itself in many ways on both sides of politics, in the union movement, the banks and the public service, to seek to destroy diversity and public debate in our political system. This is the real reason for unprecedented political attacks against me personally and the stand that we took as a party against the 2014 budget. I have and our Senate voting positions have rarely been subject to proper recognition or the contributions the Palm United Party has made to Australia. The three main attacks against me personally related to my private business, not my service in this chamber, which are 100 per cent owned by me, have no mum and dad investors, no bank debt. In my electorate of Fairfax, they attacked me over Coolum Resort, which is still operating, employing people, which was, close, was to be closed permanently in 2011 and which Campbell Newman and the LNP state government refused to allow to be redeveloped, which would have created over 10,000 jobs on the Sunshine Coast. As a result of 10 years' hard work, I secured over $12 billion investment from China, which has resulted in the employment of tens of thousands of Australians in the construction of China's largest investment outside of China. This investment is 15 per cent of China's total investment in Australia and over the last 10 years. It should not be forgotten that such investment has made a real contribution to our economy. More recently, I have personally been criticised in respect to Queensland Nickel. In 2009, when the price of nickel was $7.50 a pound and BHP had decided to close the refinery, every Australian should ask themselves would they have invested their life savings to save over 2,000 jobs in 500 jobs in Townsville? I know the member for Herbert wouldn't. Over the last seven years, would they have invested $4 billion to keep 2,000 500 families employed. Then, over the last two years, when the nickel price had dropped to around $3.50 a pound, would any citizen have been happy to continue to lose $6 million a month for the families of Townsville? Uh, the member for would anyone the member give over $2.5 million of their personal savings so everyone could be paid Christmas and keep the refinery open? These are the decisions I made in the affirmative. Why? Because I have a strong, real commitment to North Queensland. The Liberal Party-inspired report by the administrator, friend of the member for Herbert, is untrue. I personally and my companies have never received one dollar of Queensland Nichols own funds, nor has any person employed ever been dismissed or workers refused entitlements by me or anyone that I employ. The allegations have been, against me have been made for an improper purpose. On 1 March 2016, Administrator Park stated that unless he received $10 million, that week he was going to close the refinery and sack all the workforce. He made the same demand to the Queensland Government. On 3 March 2016, 
the joint venture partners q and Resources Proprietary Limited and Queensland Metal, q Metals, 100 per cent privately owned companies of mine, resolved to appoint a new company that was not in administration as manager of the joint venture. I personally put up some of my private assets and secured $23 million line of credit instead of 10 that the administrator was seeking. And I plan to make that available to the new manager to keep the refinery open and the workforce employed. Under the Queensland Joint Venture Agreement, the old manager, Queensland Nickel, on appointment of the new manager was required to transfer the joint venture bank account together with other assets and general approvals that Queensland Nickel had to give the new manager the ability to run the refinery. The millions of dollars in joint venture bank accounts and debtors, when added to the $23 million I had personally arranged through my personal efforts, would have allowed the business to continue to employ 550 people. John Park decided he would not transfer the bank account to the joint venture, as he was legally required to do. Park treated the joint venture funds, which were not Queensland Nichols money, as his own personal piggy bank. The allegation made by Mr Park are completely false. The allegations that are made against me by political parties I have endured over the last three years since I was elected to the House of Representatives are also false. 22,000 jobs have been lost in Queensland in the resource industry, and in South Australia 14,000 jobs are threatened, and the government has done nothing and proposes to do nothing. Meanwhile, the Chinese government injected 30 billion yuan into the metals processing industry in China, and the Canadian government gives free electricity to its metal processing industry. How can Australian industries compete with such things? Why does the government want to destroy this country and its total infrastructure? Because they're incompetent. The Treasurer becomes more and more like a public servant. Last night's budget talks about jobs growth, but it has no substance and no policy. The average Australian family pays $20,000 per year, over $1 million in their working lives, but can make no access to their savings that they pay for superannuation to buy a home or to care for their children or to deal with some disaster. Yet the Liberal fund managers make margins on their funds each year and the union delegates benefit from managing their funds and superannuation. Palm United will fight hard get, to get the balance of power in the Senate and to protect the savings of Australian families and make them available to them during their lifetime rather than when they're dead. Even before I had taken my seat in Parliament, the then Prime Minister Abbott, in one of his first decisions in Cabinet, adopted Palm United's policy we took to the 2013 election and banned political lobbyists from holding office in the Liberal Party. Then I introduced, on behalf of Palm United, a bill to stop the Grain Corp takeover. Following the pressure generated by this takeover, the then Treasurer, Joe Hockey, made the correct decision to stop the Grain Corp takeover. On 25 June 2014, I hosted the former Vice President of the United States, Mr Al Gore, in the Great Hall of Parliament, where I announced that Palm United senators would vote to save the Climate Change Authority, the Clean Energy Finance Corporation and ARENA, the Australian New, Re New Re Renewable Energy Authority. If Palm United hadn't saved them then, the Prime Minister could not have changed the government policy to support them in 2016. I also announced that Palm United senators would vote the Senate to abolish the carbon tax against the wishes of the Abbott government to ensure that the savings and the reduction of carbon tax would be passed on to the consumers of electricity and gas. Palm United votes in the Senate were essential for those decisions. The Parliamentary Library has estimated the savings to consumers by Palm United staying firm and ensuring savings were passed on was $1.6 billion. Palm United effectively reduced electric electricity prices by 10 per cent across Australia. Palm United provided the key votes to abolish the mining tax to free up investment in Australian projects. Palm United led the charge against the 2014 budget and highlighted all Australians that Australia's debt was among the lowest in the OECD. In 2014, we campaigned for the pens instead of pencils to be used in future federal elections to mark ballot papers. Palm United worked hard, and its crucial votes in the Senate stopped the GP co-payment, which would have made visits to the doctor unaffordable for our disadvantaged and elderly population. I remember giving a speech in, in the House about education and Palm United stopped changes to universities, much to the disappointment of the Education Minister. The 2014 budget had over $10 billion of cuts in Social Security, requiring unemployed people under 30 to wait six months on the dole. The CIFIX action by our party ensured that these measures would not be passed and not be implemented by the government. Palm United saved the low-income super for over 2 million Australians, keeping $1 billion in their pockets. 
And it's pleasing to see the Treasurer has adopted that to continue that in the budget last night, only change the name to, to, claim, to claim credit. The Prime Minister believes in innovation, but innovation doesn't put food on the table. We, we voted in the Senate to keep the school kids bonus, saving Australia ANs a further $1 billion a year to support their children when they go to school. It's a disgrace that neither the Labor or Liberal parties are going to the election with the policy of maintaining the bonus for our families. We kept the low-income support, which, which, of which $1.8 million is paid to Australians each year. It was our votes that did that in the Senate. We need in this country more love and forgiveness and more compassion for those less fortunate than ourselves. Parliament United deals with the government, deal with the government freed over 436 children and families from detention. We freed 1,500 people in total from Christmas Island. And our arrangements with the then Immigration Minister, Palmer, Palmer United, supported legislation in the Senate, which resulted in 30,000 uh, cases in detention being finally resolved. It was Palmer United Innovative which resulted in the introduction of the CHEV, the Safe Haven Visas. Palmer United made 15 changes and amendments in the Senate for direct action and passed it. And we've watched and seen how direct action has succeeded in reducing Australia's emissions. As part of the deal, the Climate Change Authority was to conduct and is still conducting a study into the, into the introduction of an ETS in Australia. Palmer United kept hope alive for the introduction of ETS in Australia. They plan to report to the parliament after the next election. Palmer United supported changes for pensions for all veterans and ex-servicemen and women over 55. And Palmer United initiated, by agreement with the government and others and the opposition, three parliamentary inquiries, one into trade, investment and growth, one into the Australia Fund and one into the Queensland Government. Palmer United acted to, through me to introduce a bill uh, in respect of the foreign death penalty. We protected maritime workers' jobs and our votes in the Senate were crucial in keeping this Qantas Australian owned. We stopped changes to the income tax threshold in the Senate and stop the extension of the pension age to 70. We save jobs in the Australian offshore gas industry if you look at the voting record in the Senate. Palmer United successfully voted against slashing university research grants. Earlier this year I delivered a speech on gender equality and the following month I asked the, Minister, the Prime Minister two questions, pointing out there needed to be a minimum of 40 per cent of a, of a minority gender on all Commonwealth bodies. On the 8th of March 2016, the Minister for Employment, Senator Michaela Cash, announced that the government would commit to increasing the target to 50 per cent representation across all Australian government boards, with a minimum of 40 per cent on each board, implementing Palm United's policy. You don't always need the numbers. Good ideas will be recognised by those around you if they're adopted. Others, it's real recognition. Time remains one of our most important things we have. It doesn't matter how much money you have. We're all prisoners in time. That's why our nation needs to respect all those who serve in this place and give up part of their lives for our country. This is the time. This is your time, whoever you are, wherever you are. This is your opportunity now and tomorrow. Don't be dragged down by the past. Don't be held back by the judgment of other people. The Bible tells us that we should not sit in judgment of others. Do not judge others as we have our own race to run. And, and I, I believe life is full of opportunities. I'd like to thank my daughters, Mary, Lucy, Emily, and my son, Michael, for inspiration in my life, and I feel with the love and support of my wife Anna, I can contribute further to our great country. Public service is not about just about parliamentary or government service. There are thousands of Australians serving our country all over Australia. I hope I can go in serving our country in the future. Courage remains one of the most important things that I most admire in life. We need to have courage to let go and to move on. I believe I have that courage today to leave the House of Representatives satisfied with what Palm United has done and knowing that it would have been a different Australia if we hadn't stopped the 2014 budget and, and the Newman government in Queensland. We need to praise the incorruptibility of our public officials, the integrity of our marriages and the worth of our people. It's ideas that matters. Governments may come and go, but ideas go on forever. It's ideas that will shape this nation. It's ideas through time when we are gone and forgotten in history and in commerce and in politics. It's ideas that capture the conscience of the nation and will endure. It's ideas that endure when all else is gone. We need to unite this nation we serve and we love to discover our future, to share our trials and tribulations, to overcome adversity, to pull together for the common good under the Southern Cross. As a wise man once said, 
that on this earth, God's work must truly be our own. 